Hello and welcome to another year of my life. We're heading back to the season 2006-2007 today in the company of the man in the box next to me, Freddie Canute. Freddie, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. How are you at the moment? How is, how is lockdown in London for you? Well, as you must probably know, it's very, I mean, it's quite difficult for everybody. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I always tend to look at the positive side because there is always one. Uh, and, and, uh, and first of all, we can't complain. Some of us, we can't complain because we are either not on the front line, we are not... Uh, 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 we, 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 we're not dead, <laughs> we have to say it like this as well. Uh, so we always, we always uh, have to look at the bright side of the situation, but uh, all my, obviously my prayers, my support to all those who have lost uh, uh, um, loved ones and, uh, and yeah, all those who are suffering on the front lines. But yeah, it's, it's okay, we try to uh, stay positive and do uh, make the most of this confinement time. Let's turn our attention then to, uh, to the year of your life, so 2006, yes. 2007. So you've spent five years at this point of your career in England and you're into your second season at Seville. What made you make the move away from London? You played at West Ham, at Tottenham, you're back in London now, so you were obviously very comfortable in, in the capital. Yeah, I, I really started to, to feel really good in London and uh, sometimes it's true that people look at the stats and the, 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 the numbers and they say, oh, Canute didn't have any success at all. Uh, it didn't work out at all in London. But I don't think, to be honest, I don't think it was true because obviously I had uh, my ups and downs, but uh, I, I think, um, especially for example, my last year in West Ham was not great because obviously we got relegated. I got an injury most of the season, so I couldn't help them out uh, so much. So it always stayed uh, <clears throat> something that stains a little bit my, my, uh, my history in, in, in the EPL, I would say. And in, in Tottenham um, as well, I enjoyed my time very much there. When I arrived, I scored many goals after I... Uh, I, I was a little bit uh, stopped with my uh, with me going to the African Cup of Nations. When I came back, I kind of lost my position a bit with other strikers, obviously, that I had to play while I was away. But the second year, again, uh, some goals, many assists. Uh, the coach was happy with me, but I had this fantastic opportunity to go to uh, try another league. I've always been also a fan of um, the La Liga style and, and it was a good opportunity for me to, to, to change and try something else. Do you know, I always think that as well as watching players play, sometimes the best way to find out how good a player is, is, is to find out what teammates say about them. And I was speaking to Paul Robinson, former goalkeeper at Tottenham uh, today, yeah. and he, he said that you were probably one of the most naturally gifted players he ever played with and probably underrated by most British fans. Wow, this, <laughs> I don't know if it's a compliment or not, because uh, when uh, you said you're gifted, but you don't make big things, it means that something is missing. But no, it's, uh, it's a really nice compliment. But I mean, I can't talk about myself, uh, obviously, uh, but I know that there were some people, that's why also I keep some very positive memories of my time in England, because I know the coaches, the teammates, and lots of people, the fans, were appreciating my, my, my work here. Unfortunately, to be honest, um, I wish I could have uh, done more and I wouldn't have, I mean, been stopped by a few injuries as well that have stopped my positive spells sometime. Uh, but, um, but yeah, no, I, had, I, have, I still have some fantastic memories from my time in West Ham and Tottenham and uh, yeah. Uh, Freddie, uh, believe me, this was meant as a compliment. So you go to Sevilla. First season is good. Uh, win, the, win the UEFA Cup, and one of their, their best seasons in the league for a long time. But at this point, Sevilla are a club who, who haven't won La Liga for over 60 years, haven't finished in the top four for, I think it was uh, near, near enough 50 years. So it's a club that have a way to go to get back to, to where they were. I think the season you arrived, it was you and Luis Fabiano. So that they clearly had big ambitions. But one of the first obstacles that you would 
come to, you'd face in Seville is that at the end of that first season, the club changed their sponsor, didn't they? And they were sponsored all of a sudden by 888, who were a gambling firm. But that was really in, that, that really, I was asking you to compromise your beliefs. So how did you overcome that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was always like full of good intentions and, and uh, I was, it, it, because it was the beginnings of like being, um, sponsored the clubs being sponsored by betting companies and stuff like this before we didn't see that much so i was a little bit shocked because as i said i was with good intention and so on and and obviously there was a change of sponsors so i felt really un uncomfortable wearing this, this this kind of shirt but obviously um I, I was not I was not completely stubborn, uh, uh, and I think also uh, faith uh, have to make us understand that uh, uh, it's sometimes we shouldn't be um, too uh, I would say um, extreme in the way we we see things. So obviously I was not comfortable with it, but I had a long discussion with the club, and in the end we agreed that okay for the rest of the season I had to uh, wear the same shirts of my team uh, like my teammates. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't do more than that, but but obviously I wouldn't do any personal endorsement for for these uh, for, for for these kind of companies. But um, yeah, so. You've got, come into the start of then of that second season. You had all the momentum on your side. You'd won the UEFA Cup at like the back end of the previous season. You'd got a long, long stretch without losing a game. So the first game of the new season is the Super Cup. And you start off the season with a trophy, which is pretty nice. Yeah, against Barcelona. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic game. I remember that game really much. I mean, uh, 2006 and seven was a fantastic year for, for Seville. Um, historic year obviously as you said we've won the, the UEFA Cup just the, the season before and so we were on a good run uh, but I would say 6-7 was even better because it's like a confirmation that it was not like just uh, by chance or because we were lucky uh, but just because we had like a fantastic team uh, uh, it was like almost a magic team because nobody expected us and, and it, the the, 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 the um, the sports director could bring some players that nobody really knew, but the, putting them together was like creating something quite magical. So, so, so yeah, good, good memory. This first game of uh, six, seven uh, against Barcelona. We're talking about, we're talking Barcelona. We're talking uh, Xavi, Eto, uh, Lionel Messi, I think even played that game, Ronaldinho. Uh, at the back, there was Marquez, Puyol, a very, very, very strong side, and 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 we've uh, beaten them three three zero. You get the second goal. I did the second the second goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah also, have memory. they also taken Saviola from you as well? Oh, he'd been on loan the previous season. So your best player in oh, in the first UEFA Cup season has then gone back to Barcelona just to make things even more difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And and it's been great for us uh, just the the year before. So so yeah, <laughs> it, it must have been also hard for him to go back there. But but yeah, yeah, no, they had they had a fantastic team and um, and yeah, it just proved that fresh. I mean, from the start of the season that we were going to to impress um, everybody there again. And then you got five goals in the first four games. What was the key to making such a fast start? Uh, I think it's just the momentum of the previous year first. A very good pre-season we had. Uh, the players started to know each other much better. Uh, and, and, uh, and yeah, we, we had some fantastic players. But I would say it's not only like the ability of the players, but also the humility of the of the whole squad you know i think there were there were no like big stars that uh, just wanted to uh, bring the attention on them but it's just like a good bunch of people some with a lot of experience some uh, very young but very talented like jesus navas dani alves and others um it's just like yeah it was it was a fantastic team yeah so five in four very quickly became 10 in the first 12. Yeah. You got to December with only two defeats. So you, by that point, you were in the title race. Yeah. The first big landmark game, the one that made people sit up and take notice, Real Madrid in December at the Ramon Sanchez. 
and you beat them 2-1. David Beckham puts Real in front, I think, with, the, with an outrageous free kick. Do you remember the, the game? It was, it was a nighttime game, I think, under the lights, and a fantastic occasion. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, I mean, all our games, I have so many memories of our games against, obviously, Barcelona and Madrid. I mean, some, some fantastic games. We've, we've won quite uh, uh, many games against those two teams, to be honest. Uh, and, and, um, and yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember always a lot of tension when we were going there because, to be honest, we were like the other team uh, at the time to, to, to just like disturb a little bit, uh, the, a little bit the plans of uh, Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, and, and, and yeah, so it was always like interesting games, yeah. I remember the game. So Beckham puts Sevilla in front. And then whoever was playing up front with you rattled one off the crossbar and you were there, quick as a flash on the rebound. Uh, uh, I think it was... Uh, I was playing uh, with Luis Fabiano or with, uh, with Renato? Either way, you, you got the equaliser and then you go on to win the game 2-1. At that point, can you remember the, the atmosphere in the dressing room, in that squad? Did you think you were genuine title contenders? Um, yeah, I, I mean, we believed uh, in the possibility to, 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 uh, yeah, to be a real contendant until a little bit later during that season. Uh, but yeah, I think that that squad of ours like, really had belief that we could do some amazing stuff. Uh, because obviously, as I said, we were still in the momentum of winning some, some trophies and beating Barcelona, Barcelona in, in the Super Cup. And being uh, uh, first in the league for quite a big amount of time um, until I don't know January or something like this. So, so um, uh, yeah, we, we genuinely thought it was possible, but unfortunately, obviously, we didn't have such a big squad in number. And when you're playing different competition like uh, Copa del Rey, uh, UEFA Cup at the time. Uh, and the league, obviously, you have to allow some rotation sometimes. And I think at the end, obviously, with not having such a big, big squad, it was a bit difficult. We had to give up uh, the, the, the league. It, it felt sometimes as if you were dropping points against teams who would expect you to beat, which was a shame because you, you beat Real Madrid and Barcelona at home that season. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a bit typical, isn't it? When you when you I mean when you play against big teams, you never feel tired. You never feel anything. You you can do some like exceptional things, but after the the most difficult part in winning a league is being consistent and and being able to uh, uh, um, replicate this kind of performance against a smaller team, I would say. And uh, that's where we struggled at the end of the season, where we started to be a little bit more tired. And uh, as I said, with uh, long trips for U UFA, UFA Cup uh, games and so on. Yeah. So you've beaten Barcelona at the start of the season in the Super Cup. You'd beaten Real Madrid in December. I think that season, Sevilla fans said the match of the year for them, the biggest night of the year, was Barcelona at home in March. And again, it, it was a real tight game. I think it was three red cards, Ronaldinho put Barcelona in front, then had a penalty saved. And it was one of those wonderful occasions where I think you went top again that night, but it was a, a wonderful game of football. Do you remember much about that one? Uh, I remember a bit, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if I, uh, if I scored that game because I don't, re I don't remember that much. So maybe I didn't score. I remember <laughs> that you set up the first goal. There was you and Dani Alves combined from deep. I think you got the ball in the halfway, in the centre circle. Yeah. You spread it out wide to Danny Alves, who's crossed it in. It was, it was Kurzakov would have been playing that day. Okay, yeah. He got the equaliser, but it was, it was the two, Ronaldinho's early goal, and then uh, your keeper would be Andre Palop that yeah, season. Yeah, 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 Andre, Andre And then he saved the penalty from Ronaldinho, and the whole yeah. game turned around. And yeah. then Danny Alves scored an unbelievable free kick, possibly deflected. Oh, yeah, In the yeah. second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A two-on win, but it was one of those games, if you saw it, you'd never forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I remember, as I said earlier on, uh, we had so many like fantastic games against uh, uh, Barcelona and Madrid, and so it was like an uh, um, uh, amazing time at home. I think any any team, even uh, Real and Barca, they were even 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 them, they were like really kind of fearing and respecting us when they were playing uh, in in Seville. 
the atmosphere, I mean, you have to go and watch a game there when confinement is, is over, obviously, in, in Seville, in a big, big night, in a big game. It's just like, it's just amazing. Well, I think the compliment would be that they, they regularly pinched Sevilla's best players. Uh, Sergio Ramos was playing for Madrid that season, of course, former Sevilla. And Dani Alves, shortly after that very successful couple of years with Sevilla, went to Barcelona. What was he like to play with? Dani Alves is, is amazing. For me, he's the, he's the, he's the best right back ever. It's, it's just like, he's crazy. I mean, when I say it's crazy on, on like all, all the, the definition of, of, of crazy or, or is, is, uh, is such a talented player. He's like a number 10 playing on the right back position. It's just like his vision, his accuracy passing, his uh, understanding of the positioning of the, of, of the game. Of, I mean, his impact, his impact on the game is just amazing. I, I really enjoyed playing, playing with him. And obviously, with such like big energy, he was never tired. He was just like always like hundred percent. Even training the rest, the, the the days where we were supposed to rest after a long trip. Again, he would come back the day after. He wanted to train with the rest of the team that didn't play the day before, for example. So him and Navas on the right side, it was just like a nightmare for any opposition. It wasn't like they wouldn't stop one second. So, so, yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed with this place. And people forget with Dani Alves, of course, if you go and play for Barcelona, you, you don't get many chances to take set pieces because of Leo Messi. But he, hit, he could deliver a wonderful free kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, I mean, his, his right foot is like a hand. He, he, would, he would put it exactly wherever he wants. I mean, the amount of, of goals he gave me, uh, him and, and, and uh, Jesus Navas from the right side because they would deliver some fantastic balls all the time. But he was so accurate with, the, with his right foot that he would take free kicks. I mean, I remember him and even uh, uh, Luis Fabiano at, on training. They were like the specialists for free kicks. They were taking free kicks. Like it was, it was really like the, 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 the amount of goals they were scoring was quite impressive there. Yeah. Was it tough for you to, to take the penalties? Was there a lot of competition to be the penalty taker there? Uh, the first year, yeah, it wasn't me uh, because for some reason, um, um, Maresca, and so Maresca, the, my first year there, oh, he is, I, I mean, he, he has a lot of confidence. He was a fantastic footballer as well with big confidence. So he took the first penalty, he, he scored. So after he, he didn't let anybody uh, take any penalty. But on the second year, I started to take the penalties. And after that, I was uh, kind of a specialist of the penalties until and almost until I left uh, the club. So yeah, it was, it was difficult. We had to, we have, <laughs> we have to compete a bit, but uh, I was the one taking the most, yeah. So you'd beaten Barcelona, gone back top of La Liga, very much in the title race. The next big occasion then would be the UEFA Cup quarter-final against Tottenham. Did you feel you had a point to prove? Yeah, obviously. I mean, if you're in this sport or in any sport, you will have like a competitive, uh, a competitive side and, and, uh, and these kind of games, of course. Because as I said early on, uh, I... I I don't think I left uh, the EPL the way I wanted. Uh, I wanted to prove much more here. And obviously, uh, Tottenham let me go quite easily. So, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to prove my point as well. And uh, I, I think it was the best way to do it. Uh, so I think we, we, we've beaten them at, at home in Seville and uh, drew away, which was yes. not enough for them to, to, to pass the, um, the, the, the round. So, so yeah, yeah, and, and I scored in both games. So, yeah, no, it was, I think uh, the, the, the point was proven, so I was, I was quite happy. I, I mentioned Paul Robinson earlier. The reason I was speaking to him was asking, about, asking him about your penalty. And, and was it a penalty? Because at the time, it was quite controversial. Spurs were furious. I think it was, I think it was Luis Fabiano went round Paul Robinson, who it looked like got a pretty good hand on the ball. And he was furious when the referee awarded the penalty. What was it like for you taking a penalty against Tottenham? 
Yeah, um, I, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't really remember if it was or not a penalty. There was no VAR at the time, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and to be honest, I didn't care at the time. I just I was happy to have a, a, a penalty and against someone that knows me. So so obviously it wasn't it wasn't easy. But uh, since then, I had developed a certain way to shoot penalties, and I don't think. He had ever stopped uh, this way of shooting penalties, which is like kind of looking uh, to the goalkeeper and see which uh, side is diving and just shooting the other the other side. And uh, I mean, a lot of players now are doing it, but uh, but um, yeah, so it gave me a lot of um, success in terms of uh, scoring penalties. Yeah, you have to hold your nerve though, because if if the keeper doesn't move yeah, and yeah. you haven't moved. Yeah, you, you go really wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that that happened uh, to me once, I think, and it feels really almost embarrassing because you're waiting for the goalkeeper to do the move, but if you uh, just manage the right timing, uh, sometimes it's just enough. He moves a little, he leans on one side, so you can just take him off balance. But but yeah, sometimes you have to hold your your nerve, so there's a, a, a good uh, concentration to have before taking it. Yeah. So you take a lead back to White Hart Lane. What was it like going back to London then and playing against Spurs on the ground that used to be your home ground? Because I think you scored the second goal that night to go two up pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a great start from us. Uh, we started like 100% and, uh, and uh, I think we scored the first two goals, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. So it was 2-0, so it was almost over for them because they would need to beat us 4 Four two to to win the the, 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 the to pass the round, and um, so we were quite comfortable. Uh, it was a fantastic night, to be honest. And I mean, maybe you you don't know that, but the coach Juan de Ramos told me that okay, if if we win, uh, you 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 stay in London a few days, you rest, you do whatever you need to, because he knew I was coming from London, so you can you can stay there, enjoy, see your friends, and come back at the end of the week. I said, really? Okay, <laughs> deal. And uh, obviously, um, it shows from the start of the game, we started like flat out and, and, and they couldn't, they couldn't uh, handle us. And uh, they came back in the, in the game, 2-2. Two, two. It was really, really tough game. Uh, but but uh, yeah, fantastic memories, yeah. Had you thought about what you might do to celebrate if you scored? Because you were, you were pretty conservative. You were quite reserved. After that goal, you you could have been excused for going crazy. Yeah, it was it, it wasn't it wasn't my style. Obviously, I wanted to show a little bit of respect uh, to the to 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 the fans. Uh, but it's it, I could have gone crazy for that. I think it would have been deserved. But but it's just like it wasn't my style anyway to do it. I think I've done it just a couple of times in my whole career where where I just like show. Uh, uh, crazy passion after a goal, you know. So, so I, I tend to to keep it more inside. So, yeah, I kept it uh, the same way. So you beat uh, Tottenham then into the semi-finals. You go through it against Osasuna. So now you know you've got a second consecutive UEFA Cup final. In terms of the league, do you think the league slipped away when you lost against Real Madrid at the start of May? Was that the game when you knew that it was going to be just a little bit too far? Yeah, it was around that period where, where we, as I said earlier on, we, we, we felt that it was going to be very difficult. And obviously, when we passed the round of Tottenham in the UEFA Cup, we said, wow, we can really do some, something historical in terms of uh, UEFA uh, uh, Cup trophies. So, so obviously, we didn't uh, give up on the league, but we knew that it was going to be very complicated. So, so, so we tried, but uh, as I said, it was difficult because of the, of the squad, because of a few injuries. Uh, I remember um, at the end of the season, I started to have some small problems and issues on my adductors. So I needed more rest in between games and so on. So I had to miss also some, some games, other players, same thing. So, so yeah, we had to uh, kind of... Uh, make the most of what we had and uh, try to, uh, to, 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 to win for a second time in the UEFA Cup, yeah. yeah but you, so you ended up finishing third in the league. That was still 
Sevilla's best finish in what, 45 years, and then a second consecutive UEFA Cup win. The final against Espanyol, uh, was it, how did that compare to the, the final a year previously against Middlesbrough? Because it was two Spanish teams, was it a different yeah. sort of style of game? Yeah, yeah, much harder, much harder. I remember that game uh, was much harder. Uh, obviously, two teams that uh, knew each other very, very well. Um, and, and yeah, the, the, the year before against Middlesbrough, uh, with all due respect with Middlesbrough, that we were really like kind of uh, uh, afraid before playing against them because obviously we had done a lot of video watching and so on. And, and we saw like uh, Middlesbrough were literally flying, you know, all the previous games against us before uh, arriving to the final. But we came to the final more prepared and, and we were almost cruising. But that, that year, 6-7 with, with, uh, with Espanyol, it was a different story. It was really, really tight. We, we scored first. Uh, but with a fantastic goal from Adriano, just yes. like amazing goal, and um, they, they 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 drew, and uh, I think we end up the game one one, and we had to go to the to the extra time, and uh, and very very tense until the until the end. I I they 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 uh, we score first. You I say we score. Scored. I, I scored. Scored. Yeah yeah I score I score yeah. first. Yeah I remember. And I just like prayed, oh, it's, it's over now. Let's, let's finish it like this. It would have been fantastic. We were like knackered. We were tired. It was raining. It was like we couldn't even produce, like think of producing a nice kind of football we were uh, used to produce. We just wanted to win that, that title again. And, uh, well, of course it was but, raining because the game was in Glasgow. It, it always yeah, rains in Glasgow. Yeah, of course, of course. What else? <laughs> And, uh, and he, he, they, they, they drew again, uh, so we had to go to the penalties. Uh, you took the first penalty. Is it harder taking a penalty in a shootout? Is it more nerve-wracking than taking it in the regular game? Uh, I, think, I think that one was like a bit tense because obviously you, 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 you have to walk half a pitch to, to, the, to the... It's different. Like for a final like this, I think it's uh, uh, even harder on your nerves. Uh, and by the way, what, what, what we were saying about m my style of taking penalty, it was, he almost stopped it because obviously he had studied me. And if you see the penalty, he, he just waits. He just waits until the last second. I think he just make a little movement on one side and I shoot on the other side. But it was really, really close. I think he, he, touch, he touches it even. So, so yeah, um, it, it was, uh, it, 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 but there was a hero. There was a hero in this penalty shootout. Uh, Palop uh, did fantastic, uh, fantastically well. Did he save three penalties in that shootout? I think he saved three, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so there you got another trophy uh, for, for Sevilla. Second consecutive UEFA Cup. You'd already won the Super Cup to start the season, but you weren't finished because you also had the Copa del Rey final against Hatafe to come. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, this, this season seemed to never finish because we were like in, in the race for everything. So it was really thrilling. It was like an amazing season. Uh, we could, almost, as we said earlier, we, could, uh, we were um, contenders for the, for the title, La Liga, almost until the end. We won the, the UEFA Cup uh, uh, back to back. And now we had another title to play, another trophy to play for, which was the Copa del Rey and uh, uh, against Getafe in, in, in Bernabeu in Madrid and really, really tense game. It was super hot, hot from like the temperature, but also the, 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 the crowd, the atmosphere was crazy. I've ne I mean, it, it was unbelievable the number of Sevillan fans that traveled for that game. It was like crazy. Uh, it almost seemed like we played home, um, and uh, yeah, uh, and 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 I score uh, the, the 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 only goal of the of the game. So it was like fantastic, uh, yeah, fantastic match. There's a theme emerging here, isn't there? That in all of these finals, you seem to be stepping up on the big occasion, always scoring. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's uh, that's that's the way they they in Seville they were always like talking about me about the man who scored in every finals and uh, there is only one final later in 2010 where I didn't score uh, where I didn't uh, the final we won but I didn't score which was uh, against Atlético Madrid uh, Copa del Rey in 2010. But apart from that, uh, all the other finals we, we, we've won, I, I scored. So people were always like remembering uh, like the man who scored in every final. So it's a, a, a big, big privilege to be remembered for that year. So three trophies in the season. And then just to be a bit greedy to cap it off, to start the following season, you go to the Bernabeu, score a hat-trick and you win the following season's Super Cup as well. Yeah, but you're cheating now. You're on the, 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 the next season. Well, you know, it, it, was a, it was a nice way to start the next season. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's uh, the, the start of the, the next season was, yeah, was crazy. And uh, the match at home, uh, I don't remember. I, I think the first game was 1-0, was but it was the second leg at the Bernabeu. It was 5-3 yeah. when you got the hat-trick. Exactly, exactly. Because, yes, it's still, it's still uh, considered as, I mean, linked to the 6-7, to the, to the, to the obviously, playing against the, the La Liga uh, champion. And um, the Super Cup of Spain, I mean, started fantastically well for us. And uh, something amazing happened. I mean, we go to the Bernabeu uh, and we 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 win five three. This is, I mean, this is quite crazy. I scored three goals. Renato, I think, scores the other two. And uh, and and yeah, it was it was like a fantastic night. Uh, as I said, that during that period, it seemed that everything was like. Uh, um, smiling to us you know so so it was it was great yeah. so what did it mean to you to cap off the whole year when you were awarded the african footballer of the year title i mean it was like the the, the cherry on the on the on the cake it was like a, a big big pride for me because obviously i had like uh invested so much uh, in africa in terms of what i wanted to achieve with mali uh, unfortunately, we, we couldn't win any trophy with my national team, but uh, to be recognized uh, as uh, the, the best player of the year in 2007 was like, uh, I was really grateful for that because it meant for me, but not only for me, for all the people in, in, in Mali, it meant so much when I went back there, the people were so happy. And, uh, and yeah, so I was really proud of that, not only for me, but for my family, my heritage, and uh, the whole people of Mali. It's interesting that you use the word recognition because growing up, I suppose we knew you as French because you represented the French under 19s, under 20s, didn't you? So mm -hmm. to be recognized as an African, as the best African footballer, did that have special meaning? Yeah, because I think it was the first time it happened, someone uh, born outside of the continent uh, being recognized as the best African uh, foot footballer of the year. But I, I think it also has uh, a broader meaning because we all from African background, we think that we are all Africans anyway. And, and we, 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 uh, we will need the, the help of everyone, every single one of us to, to help uh, uh, raise Africa again. So, so, so the fact that I was not born there, but I was recognized uh, like the, the the best player was like um, was 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 going beyond football for me. It was like a, a very strong meaning. So I was really happy about that. Yeah, Freddie, it was a fantastic year. Thank you so much for spending the time to talk us through it. Thank you, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.